But uh, this, this uh, uh, meaning of the term, this function, this potentiality, this dynamics can be separated from the other. Hmm? Uh, I just want to ask you how um, Aristotle is the basis of, of vegetative life, the, the, the nutrition, but embedded in that is the uh, regenerative quality of it as well? Uh, um, but I'm not sure. As, you, as you perhaps remember, it says growing, decaying, so it's... Uh, is the, but, but reproduction, though, as well, is as, as pivotal as the nutrition. Yeah, it can be also right. He, he, he chooses a term, tracticon, which is a very large term in Greek, means uh, nourishing, but it means, uh, then we have analysis of, uh, for instance, the Venice, the great the linguist, he say, in a sense, uh, uh, tra uh, tracticon in Greek means uh, to leave a being rich its natural Growth, so natural state. What was the word in Greek you said? Trepticon, the trepteima, the verb is trepto. <coughs> but let's now think to the strategy, yeah, to the meaning of this. Huh? Because here we see working one of the main principles of Aristotle philosophy, which is uh, then left to Western tradition is the mechanism of finding a foundation. But, but what it means, what, is, what does Aristotle mean by foundation? The Greek term is arche. Arche in Greek means principle or ground. It's also command. Principle or ground. Pardon? But in this sense, principle in the sense of the original foundation. Aristotle will say like this, you see. Whenever we have to define what a thing is, what something is, we have to transform this question to ask through what the something belongs to this. So, we have to define what is a living being. We have to find something, an arche, through which then we will say that life belongs to this. So, this is living, why it is living? Because it has this nutritive power. So, we have to isolate, divide the life, and find something that will function as a foundation, as a ground, as an arche, in order to be able to ascribe to a being, the poet and being alive. So, what, what is a living being? A living being is a being who has the nutritive faculty. Do, do you realize that, so it seems, it seems very simple, no? because we are accustomed to that, but do you realize that the incredible importance of this operation so, it does not define what life is. Not at all. But then, he divides it and finds one meaning of function of dynamism, which will act as an arche, as a foundation, in order to describe life to be. So, and here, it seems... Uh, an innocuous philosophical operation. But if you now consider for a moment the development of uh, Western science and Western medicine, you will see this, how this uh, apparently innocuous operation is what makes possible the whole building of, for instance, modern medicine, modern medicine science, you know, is a more extreme uh, modern uh, contemporary phenomenon. Eh? The possibility of separating what after was called vegetative life. Aristotle does not, uh, he hates plants, you know, he refers to plants, but he didn't think to the term vegetative, fitico, but uh, already uh, late Aristotle commentators, the Nietzsche, etc., some, some centuries after, defined the term futicon, vegetative, that was that then after was taken by 
Morgan scientist. So, did you realize, for instance, that uh, modern surgery was made possible only by the fact that material separating through anesthesia vegetative life from consciousness and activities and the other function. No? Right? This is clear. No? The medicine uh, transformed this uh, metaphysical, uh, logical definition in an operation. We are now able to completely separate vegetative life from uh, like the consciousness, uh, drink, etc., 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 sensation. Then I started with the uh, traditional nutritive life, sensation life, uh, thinking life, or the other conscious life. No? But there is one who will act as the archaic and which will make possible all modern science. Let's say, yes? Uh, we are falling in a trap, though, aren't we? With Pardon? We are falling in a trap this way, though, aren't we? That, um, a trap that, you know, went throughout, to, um, throughout the 18th century with Kant again. The, the whole story about Aristotelian essences. And it was dealt with already in Plato's Parmenides. Because it, it treats the same issue, it anticipates it. Whether uh, we perceive being as being, you know, immobile, mobile, whether it is, it is not. All these properties that Aristotle as, um, um, attributes to being, Plato had already um, destroyed all this because um, what he did anticipate was a count that Aristotle did? left outside, the count, count as one, count, uh. the, the representation of everything. Which is now we rediscovered through postmodern, you know, through, mm -hmm. through Saussure and so on. But this was already anticipated. Yeah. But not in the same way as Aristotle, as the Aristotle division operation in order to attribute to found an archaic. Seems to me so that, that's peculiar to his Aristotle grounding strategy. But what I what I mean. Hmm? He rendered all this as a fluke, even before it was written, the, the whole story about essences and how we proceed from this to the right foundation and that. Is that not right? I don't understand by what you mean, but, but here, what I wanted to, to make clear is the, the oper operative meaning of this strategy in modern science. If, for instance, now we take, uh, we go on and we reach the, one of the texts which is really the, the foundation of modern medicine, which is uh, uh, Bichat, Recherche Physiologique sur la vie et la mort. It's a great uh, French uh, uh, scientist who does uh, physiological research inquiries on the life and the death. And again, you could expect here we will have a definition of life, not at all. It will push to the extreme Aristotle uh, division and it will distinguish fundamental two animals. In a man, there are two animals. Who was the author? Huh? Who was the author? I didn't know. Visha. Visha. V E C. It's very interesting. Uh, author. So you have one animal which is called. Uh, which he calls the animal de dedan, the within animal, the animal of within, and which is organic life, the nutritive vegetative life of Aristotle. And we define this as an habitual succession of assimilation and excretion. So just uh, all the process of vegetative life, assimilation, excretion, etc., which they say also uh, blood circulation, etc., etc. And then there is uh, what he calls l'animal existant au dehors, the animal, the, the animal of the outside, which is the